Okay, here we are, lesson 7.7, .7, the last lesson in chapter 7. So we're going to teach you right now how to do what is called solve a right triangle. Now all I mean when they say solve a right triangle is to find every single missing piece of that right triangle. So if I'm missing some sides, find the sides. If I'm missing angles, find angles. You can solve any right triangle if they give you at least one side length plus the right angle, plus one other piece of information. Okay, so for example over here. In this one, they've given us two sides and the right angle. All right, in an example like this one, they've given us one side and an angle and the right angle. Okay, over here's another example where we have two sides and the right angle. And then another example where they gave us one side, that's a nine over there one angle and the right angle. So as long as they give you the right angle, one side, and one other piece of information, another angle or another side, you can solve a right triangle. And we're still going to be using trigonometry to do this. So keeping in mind our Sokotoa concept here, sine of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle equals adjacent. Adjacent is always a leg over the hypotenuse and tangent of an angle equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. Once again, the adjacent side is always a leg. So let's take a look at what the new thing that's going to show up in this lesson. And that's when we get a triangle that looks something like this. Let me zoom out just a tiny bit so you can see the whole thing. All right, so we are asked to find the sine of angle A. Well, we know that the sine of A is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So looking at sine of A here, we have opposite 12 hypotenuse. No, we aren't given it. So how could we figure it out? Well, we could do the Pythagorean theorem, or if you notice here, that's a five and a 12, and you should have memorized by now the Pythagorean triple of five, 12, and 13. So we know this is a 13. Okay, so now the sine of A is 12 over 13. Okay, opposite is 12 and hypotenuse is 13. Okay, now here's the big question. How do we find the actual measurement of angle A? All right, we know what the sine of A is. It's this ratio of 12 over 13. Keep in mind that sine and cosine and tangent are just ratios. Okay, so it would be nice if there was a way to figure out the exact measurement of that angle, and there is, and it's on our calculator. So let's take a look at our calculator again. now. If you can see this here, here's our sine, cosine, and tangent buttons. And right above them, there's this little thing that says sine with a little negative one sign, and a cosine with a little negative one, and a tangent with a little negative one, and it's in this different color, which always matches the color here of your second button, and that's important because that's the button we're going to end up using. All right, that little negative one is not a power, it's not an exponent. It's not like saying three to the negative one or anything like that. All right? This is what we call inverse sine, or inverse cosine, or inverse tangent. Okay, that's what that little negative one means, is we're doing an inverse. An inverse operation is an operation that cancels something else out. We do this all the time in algebra class. Addition cancels subtraction. So addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Multiplication and division cancel each other out. A square root and a squared cancel each other out. We've been doing that when we've been doing the Pythagorean theorem. So when we see something like this, the very next thing that we need to write down in our paper is A equals the inverse sine of 12 over 13. Okay, so what happens is that we really, we're doing the inverse sine to both sides of the equal sign, but we usually don't write it over here because inverse sine cancels this out and then we have inverse sine over here on this side. And then we type this into our calculator. And by the way, we're gonna to check to see if these answers make sense. Now, remember, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, not radiance. So I'm gonna turn my calculator on. I'm gonna hit my mode button. Remember, it's right up here at the top. I'm gonna to hit mode. Oh, and mine is in radians, okay? Now that happens if um, your batteries die or your calculator gets reset. You should have already put it into degrees. For me, if one of my calculus students borrows my calculator, they always turn it to radians. So I go down, down, and over, and I hit the enter button, and it moves that black box over to the degree, and then I can't clear or quit or something like that, and it takes me back here. All right, now, so I want to find this inverse sine of 12 over 13. So we're going to hit the second button right here. 
And then, now what you'll see is that little up arrow. Okay, that means you've hit the second button. And then I'm gonna hit the sign button. And since I have the second already hit, it's gonna type in inverse sign. You can see it there. Now all I'll do is type in my 12 divided by my 13, and I close my parenthesis, and I hit enter. And there's the answer. Now that's the answer in degrees. Okay, so usually we'll round it to two decimals. Okay, even if the book tells you to round it to one decimal, I want you to round it to two decimals. So the measure of angle A equals 67.38 degrees. Look back at this. Okay, you can see the 380. Zero tells the 8, it doesn't really move at all. Okay, so 67.38 degrees. All right. So that's what's called inverse sine, or inverse, we can do it with cosine, or inverse tangent. We're going to end up doing that with a couple different ones here in a second. I'm also going to teach you a way to check your answers, and I expect you to be able to do this. All right, so let's look at this one here. Okay, so go ahead and get this copied down. We have a triangle where I've given you two legs. All right, we're going to solve this triangle. That means we're going to find all the missing pieces. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to find the hypotenuse. And we know how to do that, I hope, by now. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So 4 squared plus 8 squared equals, I'll call it A squared. I'll put an A there. All right, so 16 plus 64 equals A squared. 80 equals A squared. And we're going to take the square root of both sides. If you do a factor tree on this, you get 16 times 5. All right, here we get four times four. Now, technically, once you find a pair, you can stop. I could go down into the twos if I wanted to, but I have a pair. So that's four root five equals A. Okay, so there's my side length. So I'm gonna put that back up here, four root five units. Now, we're gonna find the measure of angle X and angle Z. I'm gonna start with angle X, right? So, we look at x, I do not want to use this unless I absolutely have to. And there are a few times where you might have to do that, but most of the time you don't. Okay, I'm not going to use it at all in this example I do for you because here's the reason. If I got this wrong, if I accidentally got this wrong, maybe when you were breaking down your pairs, you had a, two, a set of twos and a set of threes and you added them together on the outside instead of multiplying. So you had a five outside and you should have had a six outside. Well, if you do that, automatically this is wrong. And if you use that to find X or to find angle Z, you're automatically gonna get those wrong as well. So I'm not gonna use this at all as I go solve for angle X, okay? I am gonna use the sides that I was given, the eight and the four. So let's think about that. Eight is opposite from angle X and four is adjacent to it. So we come back over here. What deals with opposite and adjacent? Well, that's tangent, okay? So the tangent of X equals opposite eight over adjacent four. So the tangent of x equals eight over four. Now usually if we were just gonna ask, if we were asked to find the tangent of x and stop there, we would reduce this down to two over one or even write as just two. However, we don't even need to reduce. Okay, if we're gonna find the angle, our calculator will actually do the reducing for us as it does the, the work. So all we're gonna do is write down x equals inverse tangent of eight over four. All right, now I'm gonna to go to my calculator. So I'm gonna get out my calculator, and I'm gonna do second, remember the second button here, and then inverse tangents, this button right here, you can see that eight divided by four. And I'm gonna hit enter. Now, what would happen if you had reduced it first? Let me show you, second tangent, so inverse tangent of two divided by one. You'll notice it's the same exact thing. So it doesn't matter if you reduce or not, your calculator will take care of that for you. All right, now this four, tells the three it doesn't need to do anything. So we're gonna leave this as 63.43 degrees. So X, the measure of angle X, equals 63.43 degrees. So I'm gonna come all the way back up here and I'm gonna check and put that into my answer, 63.43 degrees. Now I need to find Z. Well, some of you are gonna to wanna to do 90 plus 63.43 and get an answer and then do 180 minus that, and that's true. All the angles should add up to equal 180. However, if you got X wrong, then automatically Z would be wrong if you did it that way. So we're gonna save that till the end and use that as our check. So we're gonna use trigonometry to find Z. And if you do 90 plus 63.43 and do 180 minus that, I'm gonna have you redo it again in your homework because I want to see you do the inverse trigonometry. All right, so Z, this is opposite, this is adjacent. So we're gonna end up using tangent again. The only difference is 
that opposite is 4 and adjacent is 8 now because we change it. So it's just basically flipped upside down. We talked about that in a previous lesson, how this gets flipped upside down when we're dealing with those two angles. So I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to type in, well, let me write it down here first, z equals inverse tangent of 4 over 8. Okay, it's an 8 down there, it doesn't look like one. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to type in inverse tangent of 4 divided by 8. And once again, you can reduce it to 1 over 2 if you want to. I don't know why it's getting all blurry there. Let's see if we can get that focused. All right. I don't know why, um, but you don't, need to, you don't need to reduce it. Okay. Uh, you can just leave it as 4 over 8. Your calculator will do that for you. Now, we're going to round. So this 5 right here tells the 6 to move up to a 7. So we get 26.57 degrees. So the measure of angle Z equals 26.57 degrees. I'm going to come back up, and I'm going to write that in here, 26.57 degrees. Now, there's one last thing I'm going to do real quick just to help me with my check. I'm going to take that 4 root 5 right there, and I'm going to type it into my calculator. I'm going to type in 4 times the square root of 5, and hit Enter. And I'm going to use two decimals here, 8.94. Now, there are three checks you can always make, and I, I want you to write these three checks down. I want you to be able to do them. I will probably ask you to do them maybe on the video quiz or even on a, on a regular quiz or on a test or something like that. I'm going to ask you to do them in class to explain things. So write these down. Check number one. All right, I'm going to write these off to the side here. Pythagorean theorem. Okay, the Pythagorean theorem should work. That's check number one. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do each of these in a second. Check number two, a triangle sum theorem. Remember, that's the one that says all the angles add up to 180 degrees. And then finally, check three, big side, big angle, small side, small angle. Okay, big side, big angle, small side, small angle. Okay, so let's do these checks. So let's do the Pythagorean theorem. Now, because I'm just using this as a check, I'm going to go ahead and use the decimal in my check. It's going to be a tiny bit off, but that's because we rounded. But I'll show you what I'm going to do real quick. So I'm just going to do a squared plus b squared. So 4 squared plus 8 squared. Hit enter. I'm going to take that 8.94 squared and hit enter. So there's the a squared plus b squared part. There's the c squared part. And I'm going to compare these. Now, they're off a little bit because this was rounded. If we had actually done 4 root 5 squared and went through that 4-step process, it would be exactly 80. But once again, this is just a check. It's a quick check. So as long as these are really, really close, we're probably fine. Okay, now maybe you know we had rounded wrong or something, but we didn't in this case. Okay, but they're, as long as they're really, really close, you're probably fine. Okay, next check. Do all of the angles add to equal 180 degrees? So I'm going to take 63.43 plus 26.57 plus 90, and let's see what we get. So 63.43 plus 26.57 plus 90, enter. I get exactly 180, good, all right? Now, third check, and this is again why I want this decimal here, because it's hard to know what four root five equals without uh, you know, either typing it into your calculator or at least having an idea of 4 root 5. So this is definitely the biggest side, 4, 8, and that. So that's across from the biggest angle, which is 90. Here's my smallest side, and here's my smallest angle. They're across from each other. And then my medium angle and my medium side are across from each other. So this all makes sense. All right, looks look, looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to show you something in your book. I showed you this on another lesson. I do not want you doing things this way. If you do things this way, I'm going to mark it wrong. So here's the first one. Um... Right here, it's not going to cause a big problem, but we have tangent of A equals 3 fourths. So they changed that 3 fourths to 0.75, and then they said, okay, we're going to do the inverse tangent of 0.75. Yes, I want you doing the inverse tangent. I don't want you using a decimal here. Now, if you type inverse tangent of 0.75 into your calculator, you get this. We round it to 36.87. Don't go to one decimal like they're doing. Go to two, 36.87 degrees. But I don't want you using this. Just leave this as 3 fourths. Number one, it takes more time to change it to a decimal. And number two, if you start doing it like the next example, let's see if I can get this into the page here. Um, where is it? It's way up here at the top and I can't fit this under the camera. Hold on, let me, let me adjust this tiny bit and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, 
It's example two up at the top of the page. All right, and we'll come back to this later. Okay. Now here, these are already decimals. All right, right up here. Sine of A equals 0.87. We're usually gonna have fractions here. So they used a decimal. I don't want you using decimals here. Same thing. Here's a decimal. This is usually going to be a fraction. Don't be using a decimal here. All right, let me show you why it's a problem. Okay, here's an example where they did it. Now, this is an example I showed you the other day. 70 times tangent of 42. They went to their calculator. They typed tangent of 42 in, and they got this. Don't do that. All right, 70 times 0 .0, or 0 0.9004, that's fine. All right, but it's going to be a little bit wrong. Let me show you the difference. We'll see how wrong it actually is. So 70 times 0 0.9004, all right, gives us that. Now that 0 0.9004 actually came from the tangent of 42. So let's type in 70 tangent of 42. We get that, all right, you see how they missed all of this stuff out here, and that's important. Now, in this case, they both round to 63.03, and that's fine. Right, but sometimes it's going to cause rounding problems as well. And I don't want you to do things that sometimes work and sometimes don't work. All right, let me give you another example here in the book. I'm going to get this back down to where we, we usually have it. Okay, here's another example in the book that I don't want you doing. All right, look at this right here. Cosine of 42. They went to a decimal. 70 divided by this decimal. All right, and they got 94.2. Well, let's try that again. 70 divided by... The decimal, 0 0.7431, or 70 divided by the cosine of 42. Uh, here we actually would have a rounding issue. This would give me 94.20. That 9 would tell this to go up to a 20, basically, a 20. But really, that's a 4, and it shouldn't move up to a 20. It should be a 94.19. Right? This is one where when you do it with this four decimal thing in the book versus this, you're getting it wrong. Not just like Mr. Oates doesn't like it, but you're actually getting it wrong. All right? Same thing over here. All right, I'll give you a last example here. Okay? So on this one, sine of x equals 2 over 30. So they changed 2 over 30 of this decimal and then the inverse sine of that decimal. Not only does it take longer, it's also somewhat incorrect. So here's the answer they got, 3.824. So let me show you the difference now we're going to learn the calculator. So they did the inverse sine of 0 0.0667. And they got this. When they really should have been doing the inverse sine of 2 divided by 30. Now this one's probably not going to make a huge difference, but it's going to be a little bit different. Here we go. We can start seeing the difference again. Now both of these tell the 2 to stay the same. But you can see where this could be a problem. If this was a 5 and a 3, all right, then you'd, try, you'd be rounding up here when you shouldn't be. All right, do not use these decimals. If you use these decimals, I'm going to mark it wrong. All right, so let's give you some examples of what your work should look like. Get about, uh, I'll give you two more examples, and then I'll have you try a third one on your own. Okay, now this one is actually one we've already done before. Um, I should say like one we've already done before. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find this angle. It's pretty easy. All right, 90 plus 49 is 139. And then 180 minus 139 is 41 degrees. Now, I am not going to use that 41 degrees anymore, though, because if I made some kind of careless mistake and got 51 there or something like that, which some of you have done, I've had some of you leave it as 139 and put 139 for this answer, okay? We're not gonna use that 41. Let's call this X and call this Y. All right, so if I wanna solve for X, we never use the 90 degree angle. So I'm gonna use the 49 degree angle. So X is adjacent and this is the hypotenuse. So what deals with adjacent and hypotenuse? Looking back at Sokotoa, it's our cosine right here, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of 49 degrees equals the adjacent side, which was x, over the hypotenuse, which is 15. I'm going to cross multiply these. I'm going to put that cosine of 49 over 1. 1 times x is just x. I put the 15 in the front, cosine of 49 degrees. x is by itself, so I go to my calculator and I type it in. 15 cosine 49 degrees, enter 9.84. Okay, the zero doesn't do anything to the four, so x equals 9.84 units. And I'm going to write that back up here at the top as well. Okay, so this is 9.84.
All right, now let's find y. Remember, I'm not using the 41. I'm not gonna do the Pythagorean theorem because this has been rounded off. And if I use a rounded off answer in the Pythagorean theorem, it's gonna cause slight problems, all right? Enough that I would mark it wrong. So what do we have? We have the opposite side and we still have 15 as the hypotenuse. So we go back to Sokotoa, opposite over hypotenuse. That's sine. So the sine of 49 degrees I'm going to put over 1 equals opposite y or hypotenuse. Cross multiply y equals 15 times the sine of 49 degrees. And I'm going to type that into my calculator. Okay, 15 times the sine of 49 degrees. 11.32. Right, 0 tells the 2, it doesn't need to move at all. So y equals 11.32 units. Okay, I'm going to put that up here. 11.32. Now we're gonna do our check, three-way check. Remember Pythagorean theorem, check number one. So 9.84 squared plus 11.32 squared. 9.84 squared plus 11.32 squared. I typed that all, and I completely hit the wrong key. I typed that all in at the same time. I hit enter. And then I type in that C squared. Remember C was 15. So 15 squared, and I hit enter. These need to be really close. They're gonna be a little bit off because both of these were rounded. All right, so we're really close. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, do all the angles add up to equal 180? Well, let's check. 49 plus 41 plus 90. Yep, they equal 180. Lastly, big to big, medium to medium, small to small. We're looking pretty good. Also, since these two angles are kind of close together, these two sides should be kind of close together, but we still got small with small going across the triangle from each other and big with big going across the triangle. All right, let's go over to this one. Go ahead and copy it down. Um, go ahead and pause the video and try it yourself. And you're gonna definitely be using inverse trigonometry on this one because you're trying to find the angles. Anytime you're trying to find the angles, here we were given an angle, so it was easy to use the 180 concept. But here I have to use inverse trigonometry to find these two angles. So go ahead and copy that down, pause the video, attempt it, and I'll come back and explain it. All right, by now you should have done this one. So we're gonna do Pythagorean theorem really fast. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk through this kind of fast. You just rewind it if you need to. So eight squared, I'm gonna put an X right here, plus X squared equals 12 squared. 64 plus X squared equals 144. We subtract that 64. I get X squared equals 80. Hey, we already saw an 80 earlier, okay? So we know this is four root five. We saw that earlier. So I'm gonna put four root five. And I remember from doing that earlier that that was 8.94. So I'm just going to write a little 8.94 right here for right now. We're going to use that later on. Okay, now let's find angle D. I do not want to use this. I can use the 4 root 5. It's hard to type into a calculator. But secondly, um, if it's wrong, I'm automatically going to get it D wrong if I try to use it. So we're not going to use that. We're going to just basically ignore this down here. And we're going to use the two sides that I was given. So this is obviously the hypotenuse, and this is adjacent. So what deals with adjacent and hypotenuse? It's cosine. So the cosine of D equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of D equals 8 over 12. So what do we do next? Remember, we use inverse. So D equals the inverse cosine of 8 over 12. Now I get some kids who want to write the inverse after the fraction, like right over here or something that's incorrect. Can't do that. It's actually technically wrong. Um, if you try doing that on your calculator, I'll show you what happens. So 8 divided by 12, and then type an inverse and hit enter, and you have an error. Okay, you can't do that. All right, so let's type it in correctly. Second, inverse cosine. 8 divided by 12. Rounding to two decimals, that 9 tells that 8 to go up to a 9, so 48.19 degrees. So the measure of angle D equals 48.19 degrees. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to put that into the problem, 48.19. Now I know some of you are going to want to use these two and add them together to get this. We're not going to do it that way because if 48.19 was wrong for some reason, then we'd automatically get F wrong. So I'm going to stay with trigonometry. Opposite. Hypotenuse. Sine is the one that deals with opposite and hypotenuse. So the sine of F equals 8 over 12. So F equals the inverse sine of 8 over 12. And we're going to type that into our calculator. Inverse sine. Oh, I hit tangent. Inverse sine of 8 divided by 12, 41.81 degrees. 
So the measure of angle F equals 41.81 degrees. Put that in here. Okay, three-way check. Pythagorean theorem first. I'm going to use this 8.94. I know it's rounded off. We usually don't like to do that, but this is just a quick check. So all I'm going to do is use a decimal and see if it works. So 8 squared plus 8.94 squared. Hit enter. 12 squared. Are they really, really close? Yes, they are. Okay, we're good there. Do all of my angles add to equal 180? Well, 48.19 plus 41.81 plus 90. Yes, they equal 180. And then finally, another reason I have this here, helps me compare it to the 8. So this is medium and small, small across from small, big across from big, medium across from medium. These are really close together. These angles are pretty close together. It's making sense. All right, here we go. Last example. So, once again, copy it down. That's a U up there, not a 4. It's a capital U. This is a 9 over here. This is a 9, not an A. So that's triangle UST. Copy it down. Find the missing angle and the two missing sides. Pause the video, come back, and we'll check it here in a second. All right, you should have paused your video by now. You should have this done. You should be checking it. Remember, I'm very serious about pausing the video, doing your work. I'm going to call this X and Y, and we'll just start with finding that angle up there. So 90 plus 23 equals 113 degrees. 180 minus 113 degrees is 67 degrees. I am never going to use that 67 again, though, during this problem, just in case I made a mistake. All right. So... Here we go. Let's get X. Let's do X first. All right. So I'm not using this. I'm using this. This is adjacent. This is opposite. So what deals with opposite and adjacent? That's right. It's tangent. So the tangent of 23 degrees equals opposite. I'm going to put this over 1. Opposite over adjacent. 9 over X. Let's cross multiply. X times the tangent of 23 degrees equals 9. How do I get x by itself? I have to divide by the tangent of 23 degrees. This is all stuff we learned back in less than 5 and 6, if you remember. Okay, I'm going to type that into my calculator now. So 9 divided by the tangent of 23 degrees. Hit enter. That 2 says that stays the same, so I don't really need to write the 0. So 21.2. So x equals... 21.2 units. I'm going to put that way up here as well. Okay. All right, let's go find y. Uh, I'm not going to use the 21.2 and do Pythagorean theorem because just in case I got this wrong, it automatically make that wrong. It's also rounded off, so it would cause problems. So here we go. So let's go uh, op uh, opposite, hypotenuse, opposite and hypotenuse, and so an angle that's dealing with sine. So the sine of 23 degrees over 1 equals opposite. 9 over y. Cross multiply. 9 equals y times the sine of 23 degrees. How do I get y by itself? I divide by the sine of 23 degrees. And we're going to type that into our calculator. 9 divided by the sine of 23. 23.03, 23.03 units, so y equals 23.03 units. Okay, let's put that back up here, 23.03. Okay, let's do our three-way check. Pythagorean theorem first, I'm going to use the rounded off decimals. I know I'm using rounded off decimals, so it's probably not going to come out perfect. So here we go, 9 squared plus 21.2. And I messed that up. Let's get it squared in there like it belongs. Delete that. Man, I messed this up. Let's try to start over. 9 squared plus 21.2 squared. Okay. And hit enter. Okay, and then we're going to type in 23.03 squared. And hit enter. They look like they're really, really close. Okay, that's a good start. All right, next. Let's add them all up for the angles. So 67 plus 23 plus 90. 180, good. All right, last check. Big, big, small, small, medium, medium. You notice these angles are pretty far apart, and these sides are pretty far apart. This is all making sense. We're good. All right, review the lesson, inverse trigonometry. If you are trying to find an angle, use 
inverse trigonometry. Okay, if you're trying to find an angle, use inverse trigonometry. Unless you can find that angle using triangle sum theorem when you were given one angle to begin with. Don't use the triangle sum theorem when you had to find an angle to start with. Okay? Alright, if you know an angle other than the right angle, then use regular trigonometry, which is what we learned back in lesson five and six. Trigonometry. All right, there's your two things. This is lesson 7.7. .7. This is really lesson 7.5 and 7.6. We did a little bit of review in that in this lesson. There you go, we're done with chapter seven. Better be ready for a video quiz over this. And then we got a quiz, regular quiz, over lessons four, five, six, and seven coming up soon. And a chapter test not too long after that. See you in class.